De regreso aquí en Auto 060 and uh, again uh, once more we're gonna switch back to English because now we have a uh, shooting by Yanatan uh, and uh, we're gonna talk about a very interesting topic from the American Council for Energy Efficient Economy uh, about the greenest and the meanest cars uh, in uh, 2014. How are you Shurti? Good, how are you? Excellent, thank you very much. Very, very interesting uh, listing uh, uh, because uh, gas is still uh, one of the main uh, things that people think about when they're uh, buying a car, right? Yes, I think that's definitely the case in terms of how much they can save for consumers, yeah. And uh, so can we go a little bit uh, over the list? I see that the, the smart electric uh, tops number one, uh, no surprise there, I guess, because, or maybe yes, uh, that the, 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 the Toyota Prius, I guess, has been uh, number one for years and years, but no, more competition is coming into that segment, right? Well, actually, if you look into our past rankings, um, the Toyota Prius is sort of tied pretty frequently with the Honda Civic natural gas vehicle. So uh, in the past, that was the number one car. But as you can see, with the new uh, additions to the market, we're seeing more and more electric drive vehicles, more and more efficient hybrids coming into the market. So the greenest list is becoming a combination of those electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. So in this case, uh, the smart electric car uh, is fully electric, uh, and uh, so no, no gas there, but the equivalent is like pretty amazing, right? That when you compare it to what would be like even the, the gas engine in that car, uh, the same car with a, with a gas engine. Well, you have to keep in mind that the smart is a pretty small car. So yes, the fuel economy is good because the car is small, um, and the engine is also pretty small. But the other thing to keep in mind is that our rankings sort of look at a, um, a sort of wells to wheels analysis. So we look at the emissions that come not only from driving the vehicle, but also from the manufacturing process, how the um, fuel is sourced and how it's distributed, and then also from the recycling um, component of the vehicle. So Yeah, and uh, especially in the recycling part of it, uh, more manufacturers are getting involved in that uh, aspect and making their cars like really greener in that in that sense, I think Ford is uh, pretty pretty uh, ahead in that in that game. I don't know if ahead, but like they're doing a lot with that. Yeah, I think so, and I think um, automakers in general are becoming more conscious of how green their vehicles can be. Yeah. So, uh, what other cars are uh, on the top? Uh, let's say five, to top ten from the greenest cars for 2014. Um, so, like we said, the electric vehicle, the smart electric vehicle tops the list, and then we have the Toyota Prius um, uh, C in spot number two, and then in number three we have the, the Nissan Leaf, um, which is another all-electric vehicle um, that came out a few years ago, and then of course you have the conventional Toyota Prius, and then the number fifth spot goes to the Honda Civic Hybrid, which is a, a very efficient, uh, fuel efficient, um, and you know, low emission vehicle in general. So. Yeah, and I, and I see in the list uh, the Honda Civic with natural gas uh, mm -hmm. wa was was in the list last year, but it's not in this year. It wasn't last year, but it is back on the list this oh, year. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, yeah. And then that's an option that, uh, unfortunately, for a lot of people, there's not enough infrastructure, right? I believe that the Honda Civic natural gas is limited uh, uh, for sale, uh, I guess, in California and some other east uh, west coast states. Yeah, I, that's definitely the case. Um, we, so we're just finding that a lot of the natural gas infrastructure isn't keeping up with um, natural gas vehicle production. Honda this has said that they want to try and make it um, an option for most drivers across the country, but until they can figure out sort of the infrastructure issue, um, I think you'll definitely find it... Um, you know, minimize the people who can afford to fill up at home with these, you know, self-filling stations, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, uh, technology that uh, is uh, way ahead of, uh, of the rest of the infrastructure and uh, laws. In the past segment, we talked about anonymous, uh, autonomous driving, and uh, obviously the technology is way ahead of uh, legislation and like what uh, cities and governments are, are taking into it but uh, so uh, you tell you, you told me that the, that the score that uh, the institute does it, it goes uh, from um, from not only the car itself so what is the American Council for Energy Efficient Economy who who are you for people who don't know we're a small nonprofit that's based in Washington, D.C., um, that sort of encourages, advocates for energy efficiency and does re energy efficiency research um, 
as a, as a means to improve the economy. So, you know, that it's in our name, the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy. We sort of see energy efficiency um, as a means to, you know, provide jobs, to provide customers with savings. Um, and so that's the type of research that we do. Yeah, very interesting and very useful because, I mean, as, as you said, like some people, yes, the gas price is pretty important, but also uh, there are concerns about uh, or consensus about other things that how the cars are made and all that. So uh, okay. another car on the green list is the Mitsubishi Mirage, uh, new for uh, 2014, right? Yes, that's new. And it's it's the highest ranking non-hybrid vehicle on the list. So it's a, you know, a traditional con uh, gasoline vehicle. Yeah. Uh, am I missing the Mazda 3 because, I mean, they, with the diesel engine, because those cars have been very popular lately, and especially the, the new offering with the diesels. Uh, do I see it on the list or am I missing it? I guess I'm not. There's no, there's no, there are no diesel vehicles on the list this year. Um, you know, uh, there are a number of manufacturers that have brought diesel vehicles to the U.S., including Mazda. And then I think the, the, the other big companies are all the European companies, so Volkswagen, Audi, et cetera, et cetera. And they all generally do pretty well, but um, they still don't have a score high enough to sort of get them on the, on the greenest list. And uh, why is that? Because, I mean, the new diesels, I mean, pe the, the old ones, people like hate them because the, they were noisy, they were like polluting, you could see like the black uh, cloud behind the car. Why, why aren't diesels like up there? I mean, there's some cars like the Mazda 3 in particular, the Mazda 6, and some Volkswagen, the, the GTI and all that, they're pretty good uh, in terms of MPG, right? Yeah, it's pretty good in terms of fuel economy, and they, they can definitely compete um, with other, you know, uh, efficient conventionals and hybrid vehicles. It's just that because we look not only at fuel economy, we also look at emissions. And despite the fact that there are a number of, um, you know, uh, emission technologies that diesels have been including, they still don't do as well on the emissions front, on in-use emissions front, as they do uh, as some of the hybrid vehicles and the, the very clean gasoline vehicles do. Okay, let's go to the dirty part of the report, I guess. Uh, I mean, but I think you have to take them for what they are, right? Like, so the number one is the Ram 2500 um, Class 2B. So why why is that? Like, I guess pretty big truck, but again, intended for like heavy heavy duty work. Exactly. So you can see that the meanest list is sort of a combination of these heavier light duty trucks but also, you know, these big engine European sports cars. So, I mean, like I said, you have to take them for what it is. They're not everyone is that's going to be buying these vehicles. Um, and largely, uh, these vehicles are on the list because, A, they're very, very heavy, and because we look at weight as part of manufacturing emissions, um, that's where these vehicles get docked down. And in general, their fuel economy is just not very great. So, for instance, we look at the Bugatti Veyron. It's an 8-liter, 16-cylinder engine, and it only gets 8 mpg in the city. So, I mean, you've got to take these cars for what they are. Yeah, so. it's a fantastic car, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of power behind it, but when it comes to clean, that's, you know, it's not exactly clean. No, so. absolutely. No, and, and again, like, uh, I, I think, for example, I always uh, make that example of uh, the Homer. Like, when it came out, I think it got right. a very bad uh, reputation for what it was. I mean, a military vehicle adapted to civil life, but and, and at exactly. the time where the Prius was coming out, so the comparison was pretty bad for them, but uh, it, it was a great car. Yeah, well, fair enough, exactly, and it depends what you're looking for at the end of the day. So if you're looking for a high-powered uh, vehicle, then you'll go for one of these guys, but if you're looking, if you're thinking sort of on the lines of how can I be cleaner in the environment, then, you know, that's where our list comes into play. So Excellent. So what other cars? Uh, we have like less than a minute, but like, and you mention a couple more cars in the dirty side of it? Sure. Um, like I mentioned, the Bugatti Veyron is on there. Um, again, the Bentley Mulsanne is on there. There are a couple of uh, Mercedes vehicles, the G63 AMG and the G550. And um, you can also see that there are a couple of uh, Ford vehicles, the Ford E150 wagon and the Ford Expedition um, flex fuel vehicle are on there. So Excellent. Uh, Shuri by Yanathan uh, from uh, the American Council for Energy Efficient Economy. Thank you very much for your time and information. Where can people find more information about it? Um, if you go to our website, www.greenercars.org, you can see sort of the key highlights. And then you Excellent. can also buy a subscription for all our rankings. Excellent. So. Thank you very much, Shuri. Esta fue la edición de esta semana de Auto 060, los esperamos muy pronto, vamos a viajar al Auto Show de Chicago donde le vamos a traer todas las novedades desde la ciudad de los vientos. Yo soy Javier Mota y esto es Auto 060. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.